Hi, my name is Wendy, also known as Wendy Bellfly. I'm a singer, songwriter, wife, and mom of one little boy named Darian. I'm sharing a story about how I grew up so you can understand why I believe there are 11 reasons why some people are successful in their field of choice and how you can apply these ideas to your own goals. Both of my parents are immigrants from Taiwan who moved to California. I remember my dad working every day tirelessly at my grandpa's Taiwanese restaurant to provide a better life than the one he had in Taiwan. Eventually, he would also start his own computer repair business within the same building. My dad told me a story of his humble beginnings, of how when he was young, he had to split one apple between six other children, for he had many brothers and sisters. It was through the help of the combined effort of his brothers and sisters and the wonderful mountain community that my grandpa's business has survived over 40 years. I remember after graduating high school in 2006, getting accepted to UCSD and explaining to my dad, I wanted to pursue singing and songwriting. My dad had said that he did not recommend it for reasons I kind of understood at the time. My dad didn't want me to risk my heart on something. He didn't know the roadmap to achieve, nor was certain that could bring any income. My dad didn't want me to experience the same hardship he had. And growing up in Taiwan is different than growing up in America, where the entertainment industry is more widely recognized. Even though I really believed in the artistry of the song I wrote on my graduating year of high school that I had performed for an AP English Carpe Diem assignment titled Six Senses Parentheses Love Parentheses Close, which you can listen to on iTunes or Spotify and which I'll talk more about soon, I understood that my dad wanted the best for me by the means of a safe path. Naturally a shy introverted kid who had low thyroid problems where my mind was foggy but wasn't aware of the health issue at the time and assumed it was normal to feel the way I did, I was already leaning towards the safer path of the four-year university. And as a kid, I highly respected my parents, especially my dad, because he had to raise three kids on his own practically because my mom had untreated postpartum depression along with other mental health issues that she could not overcome because of never fully feeling connected with her new home. I decided that my dad's beliefs had good intentions behind it because everything else he did for us did. With my dad working all the time and my mom practicing self-care by resting in her room while my brother, sister, and I were by ourselves watching TV, this kind of childhood actually challenged me to entertain myself, to get into self-expression through singing and songwriting. So this leads into my first reason out of 11 why some people are more successful than others in a field of choice. Success leaves clues. Successful people tend to 1. Study and emulate aspects of those who are successful, and you can do this while staying true to yourself, learning from an expert while holding on to your own individuality. Many people follow in the footsteps of their parents because they already have the blueprint to achieve that path. If I want to start my own restaurant or do computer repairs, it's something I could have easily done just by learning from my dad. If I really wanted to do music, what I needed was continued music education. Because everybody has their own unique perspective and life experiences, even if you study and learn from someone, you will always have something original to offer because the way you express an idea will be different. Most songs on the radio are about love, and there are many takes about a songwriter's experiences with this emotion. Because you have an offering that no one else has, even given the same springboard of an idea or concept, generally everyone has their own take on what the results of a project or an assignment looks like. Like my Carpe Diem assignment 2006, um, AP English class when um, I wrote my song, Six Senses Love, um, again, as a reminder, currently released on iTunes and Spotify. It was like a journal of different activities and life experience practices I could choose from. What did seizing the day look like to me? For me, it was performing an original song I made in front of a class of roughly 30 students. I remember getting up in front of class and singing and as I progressively got further into the song, my whole body froze. My hands felt cold and numb, and by the end of it, it was hard to move because both feet had fallen asleep. Um, a few classmates were really encouraging, told me to keep up with my music, but for me, the physical trauma of freezing in front of people was so impressionable to me. 
while coping with low thyroid issues and my dad encouraging me to embrace UCSD admissions, I stopped songwriting until after I graduated college in 2011. It wasn't until 2019 when my husband heard on Spotify Dan and Shay and Justin Bieber's 10,000 hour song. He was like, Wendy, I think that's your song. I was super shocked at first because although my song was in D major and theirs is in B flat major, our concepts for the song was lyrically similar and the vocals for my song could technically work over their chord progression. But after listening to it more, I do believe there is enough unique differences uh, to make the song uniquely their own. Um, I think... It's possible we were both inspired by one of Tony Robbins' motivational audio CDs. Um, just me earlier in 2006, while them in 2019. I definitely could see the similarities, like, my song was the call and there was a response as a fellow songwriter. I'm not really sure if they ever heard my song before they wrote theirs or seen my music video released a year before theirs. I know... I was applying to The Voice and American Idol in link submissions, so it's possible my ideas were leaked around that time. My song, if you've been reading the lyrics on the video, was about traveling the world, searching for true love, and then wondering about who they could be, and that I was thinking of them till I got there. And in the meantime, asking questions about their hobbies, wondering what about their favorite song, if they dance like no one's watching, and asking to tell me about their family, etc. Things you'd ask someone you were dating to learn more about them, except I wrote from a perspective of having not met the person yet. Their song was writing from the perspective of wanting to be even closer to the person they are with and wanted to know everything about. There's a saying that in order to become world class in any field, you need 10,000 hours of practice. So the narrative of wanting to spend 10,000 hours to learn a person's heart is really sweet, which is distinctly different from my narrative of traveling the world to find the one, then wondering about what their heart is like while you are on the search. I met my husband at a part-time job, by the way. Um, but anyways, this story leads into my second why. Two, caring about your dream enough to never give up. It's the dedication necessary for success of any dream. Spending 10,000 hours in learning, spending 10,000 hours in creating, spending 10,000 hours in promoting. Dan and Shay and Justin Bieber's 10,000 hours song received multiple awards, including a Grammy for Best Country Duo Group Performance in 2021. And because their song is fairly similar to my song, I wonder if I could have won an award for Six Senses Love, maybe even a Grammy, had I promoted my song every day, all day, to all radio stations, if I had spent 10,000 hours in 2006 celebrating my joy of songwriting and 10,000 hours sharing the music, maybe then that would have been me holding a Grammy at age 18. It was sad, really, finally completing the production of the backtrack of my song in 2017, brave enough to release it to Spotify and iTunes finally. I was totally elated, enough that I could fly. You know, I remember in 2017 trying to get my song on radio stations, and after being rejected to a couple stations, I kind of just stopped trying for a while. Handling joint and muscle pain from car accidents on top of two rejections also deflated my goals. This leads to number three, the importance of self-awareness of your own health. Sleeping right, eating well, exercise, chiropractic care, shockwave therapy if you have joint pain, um, getting blood work done to check your hormonal imbalances or nutritional deficiencies, because the way you feel will affect your ability to set and achieve goals. And four, being persistent in your goals through rehearsal of why it's important you can care about something, but if you don't have a strong enough why, it's easy to forget and give up. And I forgot my why for a very long time till my son was born, because he, along with my husband, is living proof for me of all the reasons why I was writing and dreaming in my songs. Every song was written to prepare myself for the blessing that is my husband and son. And this leads to my next why. Five, patience in the process. Making art takes time. It's important to enjoy the process of art making. In 2011, the job market was impossible. I couldn't afford living in San Diego without a job, so I moved back home. 
I had switched my major a couple times, landed on a traditional arts degree in studio drawing, thought character and world designing for video games could be cool. I did a few freelance illustration jobs online, but I was really stubborn on wanting to create on my own terms, own vision, own storyline. I didn't want to be a part of someone else's brand, but my own, because I felt I had stories to tell that didn't fit anyone else's mold. This was also the year I officially started taking thyroid meds. I drew a bunch of illustrations, which I'd like to put together in a future book. And this leads me to number six, consistency in execution. What that looks like for me is keep making songs. And I did from 2011 to now. I wrote songs uh, like Call the Act of Flying, currently in production, and then Reinvent Yourself in 2014, released uh, to public recently on iTunes and Spotify, and another 14 songs. You know, for athletes, um, what consistency and execution looks like is practicing for a sport and to keep playing the game. For an illustrator, it's to keep drawing and to keep making complete works. For a YouTuber, which is also me now, is for me to keep making videos. Um, and this goes to number seven, um, resilience that sparks innovation and reinvent when needed. Keep learning about different frameworks of expression. Sometimes it takes a different approach to reach your goals. That's why I am trying YouTube as a form of creative expression. Number eight, defining your unique vision of success. I want to be successful, but under my own terms. Everything in life happened for a reason. I believe being a female singer and songwriter in 2006 is different than being a singer and songwriter in 2023. There's more acceptance of women in music and art making. As a YouTuber, I have full creative freedom in how my music is presented and what songs I write. I am my own marketer. Traditional ways to sign a label, but I don't want anyone else to have control of my music or my life except myself. We've seen the struggle Taylor Swift had to go through to own the rights of her own music. Music. In 2023, she came out victorious and has truly created her own destiny. Number nine, creating connections and self-positioning for luck. Um, people always say you have to have connections to be successful. Yes, some, some people are lucky and are born into connections to get the right mentorship or leg up into their goals. But we have the choice to join creative workshops or call radio stations, talent agencies, or to make our own content now with YouTube to reach out to content creators that share your audience. You can buy press release packages, pay for newspaper ads, or take social media marketing courses. Marie Forleo and Seth Godin are some of my favorite entrepreneurs. Marie's book on everything is figure outable is a life-saving and life-changing belief to adopt. Seth Godin has many books filled with practical advice for creators. One of his books, Purple Cow, is about developing a remarkable idea, product, or service that will differentiate yourself from competitors. In an online article, he thought provokingly says that kids should learn two things and only two things to thrive. One, solve interesting problems. Two, lead. This goes into 10, accessing working capital. You can take initiative to work an extra job to save money for your hobbies and dreams. Pick up an extra side hustle, cleaning, babysitting, teacher workshop, or class on a skill you have. I pay for my own recording studio sessions and art supplies for artwork. There's no sponsorships yet. <laughs> you can get a business loan to start your own company or look into creative contests offering prize money to further fuel your dreams. Creative Dow holds YouTube challenge contests regularly. 11. A good marketing strategy is important. One of the many pieces of wisdom Seth Godin has to share is don't find your customers for your products. Find products for your customers. The first part of the strategy is making something that solves a customer's problem. Then it's about spreading the solution and learning the different ways to share the product, service, or solution. I'm still trying to learn about social media, Facebook ads, Instagram, TikTok, which I will get into more next. In person marketing and word of mouth is also a great way to share your work for a creator. I try to sing to everyone at my grandpa's restaurant when I work celebrating families and friends, couples and birthdays. I have a chorus I sing for each occasion and the first 100 subscribers I have are from people I have actually met and sung to personally. Thank you all again for subscribing. I hope this video was helpful. Check out my music on iTunes and Spotify for joyful good vibes and please like and subscribe. Thanks again.